A little bit ago, I did an iceberg video. This time, instead of sports video games, it's wrestling video games, because there's a ton of stuff regarding wrestling to talk about. But first of all, what's an iceberg? Well, it's more than just the thing the Titanic crashed into nowadays. Icebergs are cool little facts and tidbits about a topic. There are multiple levels, and the lower the level, the more interesting or creepy or whatever the facts become. Anyway, let's get started, because I'm not the type of guy to have three minutes of exposition to start a video. Yeah, let's get this out of the way. 2K20 has more glitches than The Matrix. Nightmare fuel-inducing faces. Blowjobs. And this thing that happened to an IGN reviewer. Weighing in at 290 pounds, the animal, Batista. A bug happened where the game was made unplayable in the year 2020. I'm not making this up. 2K20 was unplayable in the year 2020. Crazy. The glitches led to critic and fan disappointment and led to 2K21 being skipped outright. Your game absolutely sucked! TNA wrestler suicide came from humble, mediocre beginnings. I always remembered the commercial because this game store just exclusively sold two games. John Woo's Stranglehold and Mortal Kombat. TNA game? You want some of this? Bring it. Suicide was an original character for the game and would later be used in real life TNA for like 20 years or something and would be played by like 20 different wrestlers. Speaking of the TNA game, Midway themselves went under and THQ picked up the dev team. They would eventually go on to make a zany arcade-like game called WWE All-Stars that used the same engine and assets as the TNA game. The interesting thing here is that they made their very own fight stick for some reason. I guess to emulate the arcade feel or for people who are more competitive, but WWE All-Stars is not exactly what I call super in-depth. It's just odd that this was ever a thing. No Mercy on the N64 had a shop where you could buy moves, weapons, wrestlers, and the like. One of the odder things is that the Godfather's hoe is super expensive. So expensive she costs more than Shawn Michaels. 500,000 WWF dollars. No, that's a lot of money! When I was six, I was asking why does a hoe cost that much? I guess Godfather was right when he said his legendary catchphrase. Oh, man. All Elite Wrestling is getting their very own video game. The game is using No Mercy as an inspiration and even has the No Mercy director, this guy whose name I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce, and former WWE developer Ukes. We'll see how this one goes. Hopefully they get off to an explosive start. Kick the oh my! Oh my god! Where's the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom! The quieter known as CM Punk left WWE in January of 2014. Despite leaving on bad terms and early in the year, he was still featured in WWE 2K15. I guess because they revolved the 2K showcase mode around him and John Cena so they couldn't just scrap it. Evidently, Punk was paid well to be in the game. WWE 2K15 is the last wrestling game to feature CM Punk, which is a shame. I'd rather watch a marathon of WNBA games than be associated with the pure shitty garbage that is WWE 2K15. Don't worry though, Punk would go on to be featured in the UFC games, where he would be the lowest rated fighter there. This is a high level wrestler of the highest order. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Gotcha, bitch! <laughs> the ECW games were made by Acclaim, and they sucked. They were essentially copy and pasted versions of Acclaim's WWF games, which sucked too. The first game, ECW Hardcore Revolution, was panned hard. It would make a sequel in just six months and call it ECW Anarchy Rules, and it was practically the same game. The game adds everyone's favorite ECW match, a brimstone match. A match where you throw your opponent outside the ring onto nacho cheese and then they spontaneously combust into flames and die. Back off! She can't defend us! In SmackDown Just Bring It, The Undertaker has his Rollin' song by Limp Bizkit. Have you ever wondered how they managed to acquire the rights to the song? You probably haven't, but the answer is Fred Durst wanted to be included in the game, which gives us the weirdest unlockable character in any wrestling game. Except it's not, but we'll get to that later. 
Matt Dickey. This man has produced games all by himself for longer than a good portion of the people watching this video have been alive. His wrestling games are popular for the creative freedom that his games give. He even recently released the game on the Switch. Cheap plug, I know, but hey, I have a video on that. AKI, or Aki, however you want to pronounce it, are the developers behind the classic Nintendo 64 wrestling games. From WCW vs. NWO to No Mercy. They would later make the Def Jam games, too. AKI would later be renamed to Sin Sophia, and they would make games like this. Yeah, kind of a far cry from wrestling, isn't it? Raven is the only wrestler that is playable in a WWE game, a ECW game, and a WCW game. Imagining all the wrestlers that work for all three companies, Raven would be the one I wouldn't suspect first. SmackDown vs. Raw 2008 for the Xbox 360 had a feature where you can import your own music into the game. This feature was not going to be on a PS3, so as a makeup they gave the PS3 version the most worthless feature I've ever seen in any video game. During entrances you can activate first person mode and watch the entrance in first person. You can even control where you're looking with the motion sensing 6 axis controller. Man, they were really digging for a feature, weren't they? Neo Seeker user Reg Ice take on the feature is it's nice, but it's also gay. In WWE 2K14, we were given a mode where you had to beat a ridiculously hard Undertaker at WrestleMania in order to beat the streak. The mode would never make a return despite being very popular. We're probably never going to see it again anyway, now that the streak was ended in real life by Brock Lesnar. In WWE 2K19, they couldn't get Cena to record his lines because he was busy doing other stuff, I guess. So they hired some guy they found on the street to give us this performance. I saw what you did out there tonight. That took some guts to put your match with me on the line. Honestly, I'm surprised you did. Man, not only does it sound nothing like Cena, it sounds like they just made the pitch lower and that's it. Hey, I can be Cena too. I feel lucky. I feel great. It's time to go to work. Speaking of people they couldn't get, here's the Enforcer. It's supposed to be Mike Tyson, but I figured 2K didn't want to pay him for his likeness, only for this minor appearance. So we get this guy who looks like the exact opposite of Tyson. I wonder if anybody's gonna play WWE 2K16 and wonder who the hell this guy is. Predator Technology. Man, I feel like I'm gonna be placed on a list just for saying that. This was a huge part of the advertisement for WWE 12. What was Predator technology? Honestly, it just meant you press up on a D-pad to wake up and stalk your opponent. That's it. No WWE game since has advertised Predator technology, and outside of this video, you'll never hear of it again. Mostly because it sounds like something Jared Fogle would use in his spare time. There's been several times in WWE where certain wrestlers' entrance themes were not in the game and replaced with something else due to copyright. Most notable is WrestleMania X8, where Hogan's NWO theme is replaced with this generic garbage. What's strange is that Booker T's theme is changed to this song that sounds like a future level in Crash Bandicoot. Can you dig it, Why though? Is Booker T's theme not owned by WWE? Can somebody help me out here? Like everyone else on planet Earth, 2K ignored the Wii U and never published any games on it. When the Switch came out and sold really well, that's when 2K decided it was time to bring the WWE games to Nintendo with WWE 2K18. 
How is it? Well, if you thought 2K15 and 2K20 were bad, then check this shit out. Can he follow up here? He's looking for the win. One. Two. Shoulder got up, but I don't think it was in time. Come on, ref. Finish the count. I'm just as shocked as everyone else, Cole. His opponent included. I've seen picture books with better frame rates than this game. It's a disaster, and the WWE 2K series has been absent on a Switch ever since. Al Snow's head can be unlocked in WWF Attitude. It is by far the weirdest unlockable character in any wrestling game. Except it's not, but we'll get to that later. Man, I just love head. I also love the little mannequin head that Al Snow carries around. The PS2 got the SmackDown games, and the GameCube would eventually get the Day of Reckoning series and WrestleMania 18 and 19. That's the best two-headed monster since, uh, I don't know, Cat Dog or something. The Xbox wouldn't be left out as they would get the Raw series and WrestleMania 21, which is the worst two-headed monster since, um, I don't know, this snake I found on Google Images. WrestleMania 21 is interesting though because it's an American developed WWE game, which is rare. This game is also poorly received despite the impressive graphics and smooth, albeit unimpactful, animations. In one of the oddest storylines in any WWE game, SmackDown vs Raw 2007 had Candice Michelle with a magic wand. She starts by knocking you out with it. Did you see that? Candice just hit it with her cute little plastic wand! Plastic wand, my sooner backside! That shot dropped in like a sack of spuds! Then she transforms you into a woman. Yes. What the? Then she changes Edge's voice to Davari's. I think even Davari could have put that better. In fact, let's find out. Check on Kenny, my man! Check on Kenny! Then she changes Davar, uh, Edge into the boogeyman. I'm not done with you yet. It's the man, Boogeyman! And then I'm I'm someone up big it am! Fine, whatever. Lord knows what Ukes was on when they came up with this. This was a PC exclusive free to play WWE game. There's no footage of gameplay or anything, but it seems you play online for fame and money to buy more wrestlers and gear. Standard stuff. And here comes the pain, you can actually have the ref win the match. If you select the first blood match and select the wrestler with a powerbomb finisher, you weaken the head of the guy with the powerbomb finish until they're at red health. Then attempt the powerbomb finisher on the ref. The powerbomb reversal animation is always a DDT, so if the ref reverses the powerbomb into a DDT, then the ref would bust open the powerbomber and you have your first blood. Now watch the ref raise his clone's hand. I'm making an assumption here, but with Sting signing with AEW, I think it's safe to assume that he'll be included in the AEW game. If he is, then he'll be the only one that's been in a WCW game, a WWE game, a TNA game, and an AEW game. That's probably gonna stand forever, not unless Kevin Nash, Scott Steiner, or Booker T get into an AEW game. Or an even more unlikely scenario, TNA gets another game and Jericho winds up in there somehow. Very impressive stat for Sting. I don't know how he has all this time to do wrestling stuff and make music, but cool. WWE 13 was THQ's last published wrestling game before they went bankrupt. The rights for the WWE series of games were bought by 2K. WWE 13 was left in a limbo for a bit while this was going on. When 2K got the license to the WWE games, WWE 13 was put back on store shelves, but with 2K as the publisher instead. I have no idea if this specific copy or the THQ one is worth anything. I recently just checked these out, so go check that out if you want to hear more specifics about these games. But the too long didn't read version is that WWE Crush Hour is a twisted metal style vehicular combat game and WWF Betrayal is a beat em up where you're a wrestler going around just beating the shit out of security guards. And a hooker or two. One of the things Triple H is known for is going over, never jobbing, and burying talent. Those are all kind of the same thing, but yeah. What's funny is that for SmackDown vs. Raw 2009, THQ sent out a memo that told gaming publications not to use any screenshots of wrestlers using weapons or bleeding, 
But the most interesting thing is that they couldn't use any screenshots that put Triple H in, and I quote, a defenseless or vulnerable position. Not even in the video game world is Triple H allowed to look weak. In the earlier, simpler days of YouTube, there were these videos called Bumpmeister videos. What these were was cleverly edited WWE video game clips in a way where moves look like a combination. I think these look really cool and it's the earliest instance of wrestling game content on the platform. Shout out to Terry o Law. This was a downloadable wrestling game that was remarkably mediocre. But one of the more interesting things about it was that all the wrestlers were knockoff wrestlers. Harvey D, Mike Iceberg, Curtis Angel, Andy Organ, who has a finisher called the RAO, and listen to this theme song. I've seen inside my head a vision, never the outcome you'll be wishing for. It's like if Randy Orton went to TNA. There was a survey in 2014 that was gauging the interest in non-wrestling games. Concepts such as WWE Angry Birds, a game where you collect action figures, a game where you manage wrestlers, a turn-based combat game, and finally, the weirdest one, a game where you either control Daniel Bryan or John Cena and platform through levels to save the Bella Twins. I guess this is like Super Mario Brothers in law. Except, well, maybe not. WCW Mayhem was an attempt by EA to capitalize on the success of the AKI WCW games. Man, that's far too many letters, man. Holy shit. That's all well and good, but the game sucked ass. EA would eventually go to AKI for the sequel of Mayhem in hopes of actually getting a good game, but it was not in the cards because WCW would fold shortly thereafter. AKI would use what they worked on Mayhem 2 and put it towards another EA wrestling game, Def Jam Vendetta. It was a version of No Mercy that was supposed to come out for the Game Boy. The game would use the N64 transfer pack to unlock a secret championship path. The Game Boy version would never come out though, so it was not put into the game. You can access it though with Game Shark codes. If you want to check it out, you can look at New Legacy Inc's playthrough of it. WCW Thunder has some of the weirdest unlockable characters out of any wrestling game. No, for real this time. It starts off with what I can assume are people who worked on the game, which is kind of cool. Who are you people? But then we get into some weird shit. Now, I wasn't a huge WCW aficionado or anything, but one thing I can tell you is that there wasn't a giant ant wrestling in the company. Come on, have you ever seen a cow doing wrestling moves? I have no clue what they were on when they added in all this stuff. In WrestleMania Arcade, each wrestler has their own special ending. Some of these were batshit insane. Bret Hart becomes an actor and Lex Luger becomes an American icon, which is kinda nice. The Undertaker absorbs his victim into himself. America is destroyed simply because Yokozuna won a championship. Shawn Michaels is, uh, ravaged by the female fans at attendance. Michaels actually enjoyed it, and since he loved attention and women so much, he left wrestling and went to a profession where he can get both a politician. <laughs> Doink has elephants that ride into the arena and crush a sizable amount of people in attendance. Bam Bam Bigelow uses his fire powers to incinerate the audience. The worst one is Razor Ramon, because it kind of hits a little too close to home. Razor wins the title, but then he's jumped and beaten within an inch of his life, and he had the title stolen from him. Razor would enter a deep depression because of this, where he's sleeping on benches in train stations and hanging out in run-down taverns. He wasn't seen for three years until a recent report seen him running a pawn shop in Chile. I'm glad Scott Hall has seemingly turned it around in real life. In 2002, a need for a wrestling video game like No Mercy was in pretty big demand. So in 2002, this indie wrestling game, Pro Wrestling X, went into development. The game was funded by the fans, 
and we are in the year 2021 and the game has still not released and is still in early access. I'm not here to tell you guys the overly complicated specifics and the history of this game, but this is what the game looks like after almost two decades of development time. The honest answer, it's never going to be finished. It's going to get out of early access, but we're going to keep building it and adding to it forever. Like, I can't imagine ever thinking that this wrestling game will have everything oh. I've ever wanted and it'll be done. We're off. Where are we going? I don't know. Oh! Hello. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, the game started development before a good portion of Fortnite's player base was born, and the game looks like this. Eh, stick to M. Dicky games, y'all. You can pick up any wrestling game at random, and odds are there will be multiple wrestlers who are now dead in there. It's a sad part of the business that's getting better today, but this is crazy. Showdown Legends of Wrestling is the leader with the most wrestler deaths, with 35 wrestlers being dead. 48% of the wrestlers in this game are dead, and one of them is including this man. Owen Hart was featured in WWF Attitude. The game came out a month after his tragic death. There was this opening screenshot paying respect to him, and the blue blazer outfit was taken out of the game. This would be the last WWE game that would feature Owen Hart, and due to the circumstances surrounding his death, his wife Martha will probably not have anything to do with WWE, so we'll never see Owen in WWE anything. Owen was featured in the Legends of Wrestling games, and his last game was Showdown in 2008. Okay, so this is really fucked up for a wrestling game. The story revolves around the unluckiest rookie ever. Everyone he loves dies. His coach dies. His best friend dies, inadvertently by your own hand, by the way. His girlfriend leaves him, and his tag team partner is murdered. He faces off against the guy who murdered his tag team partner for the title, who's supposed to be Ric Flair, by the way. He wins, but the victory feels hollow as no one that he cares about is there for him. Is it really worth it? Well, three days later, he does the unthinkable. Is he dead? The Undertaker appears in the most video games out of any wrestler or any person. He started on Super WrestleMania and is still going strong today. He's been on 57 games, and barring some crazy controversy surrounding Mark Calloway, he will be featured in so many more video games well after his retirement. Now that's a streak I can tip my hat to. Thank you guys for watching. This is normally the part of the video where the content creator tells you to like the video or something, but you know, you're all grown, you all know what to do. Do your thing. If you want to see another iceberg, I made a sports video game iceberg. And if you want to check out my stuff, or if you like the sound of my voice, which I doubt, I make sports video game stuff, so by all means, check it out. See ya.